Hello, hi everyone. This is Sagar Shah, and I hope that you can hear me well. Today is the seventh day of our training. Uh, it's been quite a journey with all of you, uh, and uh, I am enjoying myself tremendously. I hope uh, you too are. So let me know in the comment section if you can hear me well. And yeah, today I am a bit late. Uh, as everyone rightly mentioned uh, i must say that actually i i woke up today to some really bad news uh, perhaps few of you might know about it but to all those who do not know uh, i'll be just sharing them with you uh, today morning i i got to know that levon aronian's wife uh, wim arian Keoli passed away uh, and she was only 33 years old uh, and a wonderful chess player, a WIM, uh, 2300 plus at one point of time. But more than that, she was also, uh, as I have written this obituary today morning, uh, she was also a managing director of a strategy consulting firm she was she started a newspaper she was doing so much social service uh, and she was also a phd she was a dancer a boxer a mountain climber a biker as you can see and aronian married her in 2017 uh, and this is my interview with her when when i met her in 2017 she was in india as well in 2018 and Aronian and uh, she were so much in love with each other and uh, it feels really sad that uh, such a person passed away at such a young age. Uh, and for me, uh, it means only one thing, which is that we, we often feel that we have a lot of time in life. We have, you know, we think we live for 70, 80 years and we keep postponing things which are uh, important for us be it being with our uh, loved ones spending time with them or pursuing a dream like say chess improvement or anything you know so maybe it's it's a wake-up call for all of us that you know you don't have unlimited time uh, you you have to do things now now is the time and that's the reason why uh, I just wanted to share this with you and today morning I spent time uh, writing about this. So, okay, time to get back in the chess mode. Uh, we'll, we'll begin today's class like we did for the first five days, which is with some tactics. Okay, let me just log in to the Chessbase account. Yeah, let's go. So, here we go. And uh, okay, so ready? Let's go. This is white to move. Hmm. Looks pretty simple, yeah. Oh, sorry. This is how is it? Ah, it's going. These pawns are going this way. Black to move and win. No, no. Come on. This is something. Something is wrong here. Let's go to the next one. Yeah, let's let's do something normal. Okay, white to move. Well, this one is seems pretty easy for now but you must look at that black may threaten to make a queen also your e5 pawn is hanging so yeah queen into a6 looks pretty simple and straightforward queens what do you do now i think you take check king b1 and uh, yeah you checkmate your opponent in on 8 or a7 okay 
good job guys let's go to the next one this one also looks pretty easy uh, but as we have mentioned already please try to write down more moves more than just one move when you are analyzing and uh, ah okay so the first position everyone saying that the rook was actually trapped wow amazing i just uh, i need to wake up today okay a lot of people sent me games uh, and i have seen all of them i think maybe i might have carelessly missed something but i have seen almost all of them so so we will be looking at over those but here all those who say rook takes f2 try to go deeper yeah try to find more moves what's happening like for example what if king goes to h3 what's your plan then and what if the king goes to g1 what if the king goes to g3 so i have some variations here i think it's improving prathavesh divekar says rook f2 king g3 rook f3 king g4 queen g2 yeah good um rajesh verma says rook f2 king h3 rook h2 okay but yeah that's also nice because if rook takes rook you lose the queen uh sumed ram take says rook f2 king h3 queen e2 hmm even that looks strong but what if i take queen into e4 can i save myself there by ch i mean maybe it's just lost but still i think after king h3 perhaps rook h2 is more accurate yeah take king h3 and now it's between queen e2 and uh, queen queen uh, uh, rook h2 i think because rook h2 if you move your king then my queen joins in and you lose so but queen e2 is it a mate after queen e4 say check queen h queen king g3 doesn't look so clear so maybe i'll just give this check Ah, it's not the strongest move. Ah, I think rook f3 check is the better way. Yeah, rook f3 mates quicker. Rook f3, king g4, queen g2. Anyway, there were so many winning moves there. Um, okay. Let's look at this one. This is black to move. This doesn't look so tough. Okay, all those who are asking how to send the game, uh, you can send it through chessbaseindia at gmail.com. That's the email address to which you send. So what do you do here? Yeah, bishop f3, bishop f3, queen d4. Good. Take, take and make use of this and the rook on a1 is hanging. Very good. Very good. Let's go to the next one. This is white to move. Ah, nice. I think this is a nice one. Very nice. Harsh Vakharia says if I best buy chess base premium do I have to buy
buy mobile app separately for it no it comes as a browser base so you can just use it without any additional uh, buying yeah knight e7 check says anushka bhat king h8 and rook d8 very nice Uh, there are also some other answers like uh, who is it Anand Sivaraman who says any seven king h8 nf7 rook f7 rook d8 rook f rook d8 but then I go rook f8 back and that doesn't seem to work any seven king h8 nf7 rook f8 rook f8 bb2 but then just bg7 back so like for example you give a check that seems like the right way and now if you take on f7 rook f7 rook d8 then rook f8 rook f8 bishop f8 bishop b2 looks like a mate but then he has bishop g7 and uh, i don't see a way to make progress sometimes when you get an idea like this uh, the right way is to just invert the move order so if you can just invert the move order that should work perfectly uh, here you know you can you can create a big threat to him and uh, as many of you have rightly pointed out Mitesh Borkhetarya, Rick Gupta uh, okay Rick has not given the move yet but Prathamesh Divekar you say rook d8 but the important point is after rook d8 to find if white black has any defensive options available you know it's the only move but i was thinking that actually the threat is to take on f7 and checkmate this guy is already protected so i need to protect only f7 so maybe knight d6 but then i just take on d6 uh, bishop e5 like for example knight d6 so it's important to look at possibilities here because now if i play takes bishop takes f7 is no longer hanging uh, so it's not so so trivial yes uh, like for example what do i do here yeah yeah okay i will i will try to make uh, give you more time but uh, like for example if i if i go rook d6 bishop e5 maybe rook d5 works here it's not not so simple or am i missing something obvious definitely it's winning for example rook d5 bishop e7 bishop f6 bishop f6 attacking here um i don't know knight c6 okay i can at least win a pawn this and clearly better position but there can be something better here uh, I was also thinking of knight g5, but then uh, it's also possible to play knight g5. Oops, knight g5, bishop g5 is just winning. So knight d6 is the only move. And now uh, take, take. Okay, I hope that uh, today there is no internet problems. There was just a small disconnection. Uh, yeah, I, I see that perhaps after bishop e3, uh, take on e3, fe3, they should be winning for white. Maybe rook e8. You see, there are so many defensive options. Uh, I, I It's pretty difficult to actually... Mm. look at it i mean it's just like for example knight d5 here 
then rook c8 and somehow black is surviving okay let's go back is there anyone who thinks uh, there there is a way to win this very simply after nd6 because rook d8 was nice uh sydney carstensen says how do you do we send you games on chessbase india at gmail dot com why not 97 king h8 bishop h6 but okay that just take on h6 instead of bishop e3 play rook c5 bishop c5 bb2 but then there is f6 it's not a mate mohini bhave uh so from here from nd6 how should i win not so simple yeah Uh, i think i think somewhere here you have to look at it carefully uh, rook d6 bishop e5 and now think about what are the possible moves so i was thinking of rook d5 as one move and rook c6 as another move uh, rook d5 seems possible bishop f6 yeah is this the best that we can get that is the question okay what we can do here is that yeah someone said that here this is some kind of but okay it's not a big thing you can always block it with f6 uh what we can do is we can there is a feature here called the engine and we can check so the engine suggests a move n5 g6 okay so basically rook d6 is its second move maybe not the most best move because after take now uh, there are two moves rook c6 and rook d5 rook c6 it still says nd3 yeah this is a move which we missed we were looking at bd bd4 bishop e3 take take rook e8 knight d5 but what if rook here ah knight c7 i have okay so this is one move which i missed uh, but nd3 is much stronger so that if i take on a6 he takes on c1 i go bishop here and then rook a8 and now you see there is an attack here uh but bishop e4 <laughs> it's a nice uh, line bd4 rook a6 rook a6 bd3 and yes white is better but nowhere close to winning so i i feel like after rook d8 it's not the end of the world according to the engine uh, take and take on g6 and rook d6 is the best way to play when you are just a pawn up uh so what i want to uh, instill in all of you is this inquisitiveness this curiosity for finding answers not one where you say done you know i play rook d8 and it's done this is something which uh, when when happens is it means that you are more attached to finding the answer than to actually uh do something like to to improve as a player yeah for by the way a big thanks to harish kumar who is the first contributor for today he's contributed 20 rupees thanks a lot for all those who are watching the live stream any contribution that you make goes to the prime minister's care fund for fighting corona virus so uh please do contribute if you would like to so rook d8 and here uh yeah nd6 has to be seen if you don't see it then you are just trying to you know find solve something and you are not actually trying to improve as a player okay so keep this in mind 
more than getting the right answer it's more important to do it properly okay ishan chess is asking me since a long time i have chess base 15 it is connected with my chess base account but when i go to cloud database it that does not show game of mine well ishan please write to chessbaseindia at gmail.com uh, we will solve your issue okay we have justin gardner who is here who, who uh, owns a chess academy in us it's called the hot chess academy right if i'm not mistaken and he says hello wishing you and your family to stay healthy and safe thank you so much for doing this okay very nice i see that the in the chat people are not really focused uh, for them it's more important to know my monthly income or more important to know certain things i don't know what instead of trying to actually solve uh, what is being given okay so let's begin with today's uh, main topic i think that all of you have become big experts in uh, the imbalance of minor pieces yes we have worked a lot i think in the last five days we've been working on minor pieces first we looked at bishops bishop pair good bishops bad bishop for bad bishop we had these three rules either to exchange it to improve the bishop to to um, change the color of the pawns for for a good bishop you see uh, if you have the bishop pair you don't exchange it uh, and we also looked at this famous game of fisher versus taimanov and uh, <clears throat> we had something uh, later on which was the knight versus bishop that we looked at by the way a big thanks of uh, thanks to say to minocha who who said thank you sagar sir for all your efforts thanks a lot uh, say to and also virendra who says i have seen your chogging and chewing so it's possible that someone might call these sessions a chalk down sessions something like chess plus lockdown yeah <laughs> interesting okay so we looked at how knights needs uh, need closed positions how they need outposts how bishop needs need pawns on both sides of the board and you have basically begun to understand when to exchange when not to we'll keep revisiting this in the positions that come up because it's not like this is over then the next one chess is as a game a whole so there will be lot of these things which will keep coming uh, but today we want to move to the next imbalance as you can see here which is the pawn structure the number two and in pawn structure we have many different kinds of pawns okay there are many different kinds of pawns that we uh, that we look at and uh, if someone can tell me what are the different kinds of pawns in chess you know there is I don't want to tell you but if someone can tell me then we begin yeah like i'll show you a game yeah arts and gadget stuff says isolated pawn okay double pawn says somya mahesh good uh Karan Parik says isolated pawn, Shivam Chaudhary isolated, Virinchi Vadali pawn chain isolated doubled. Yeah, there are isolated and double. Yusuf Farid Faryat says backward pawns. By the way, a big thanks to Sai Shri Vardhan Ram for contributing 20 rupees. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so basically, there are, I think, three main kinds of structures one is the isolated pawn where you have just one pawn so i can just show you uh, with the uh, for example if i if i were to bring it here by the way on chess base you can do s and it gives you the board to set up so if suppose this is the pawn structure this is known as 
the isolated pond okay so this pond has no one near it on this file this is an empty file here this is an empty file here this is an isolated pond okay what is a backward pond for example a pond which cannot be supported by another pond but is but is actually a part of a pond chain for example something like this okay this becomes a backward pond and usually a backward pond is on an open file so that it can be attacked uh, the most uh, the best example is of course the Shweshnikov variation which we will see later but this becomes a backward pawn and then we have the the doubled pawns which is the which is the topic of today which could be something like this you know two pawns which are on the same file are known as double pawns there are also tripled pawns by the way like this so now many of you can say isolated pawn is a is a disadvantage uh, like this but it could also be an advantage double pawns may seem like a disadvantage but they are also an advantage so it depends so let's have a look at a game uh, today that i played and this was a game that i was facing a player from india who is now an iem but at that point he was around 2100 or 2150 uh, and uh, his name is Ragunandan KS. I, I am not sure if all of you know him, but he's a very strong player. And uh, I was playing with the black pieces. Oops, sorry, I just jumped. I went d4, knight f6, c4, e6, Itohan asks, what about quadruple pawns? I don't know if such pawns exist. Maybe we should do a search of that in mega database later. Okay. Uh, knight f3, bishop b4. This is known as the Bogo Indian bd2. Queen e7. Yes, he's from Karnataka, Anushka. You're right. Knight c6, knight c3. I'm not going into the opening yet. bg2, knight a5, b3, b6. Justin Gardner says, I heard an argument the other day between two IMs. They were debating if backward pawn has to be on a half open file. Well, I would say technically a backward pawn should be on a, on a half open file. Then you really feel that it is backward because often if a pawn is not on a back on an open file, then you can say theoretically it is a backward pawn still because it is behind the other pawns it has no pawn to support it but you won't feel practically the weakness of it so much uh, black can of course use his knights and bishops to attack but the open file on the rooks cannot do it so i would say it's still a backward pawn okay oops sorry i was knight a5 b3 b6 this is this was my preparation queen c2 and rook c8 it was some kind of a novelty at that point uh, everyone used to play c5 and then a3 would be played and then take take something like this but i i first played rook c8 some kind of a semi waiting move and then queen b2 and i played c5 a3 bishop c3 bc3 and we come to this position here where i would like you to think a bit for black's move Try to understand what the imbalances are and try to see what you can do here as black. Arko Narayan says, I don't really like Nimzo Indian as black is giving up the bishop pair. Well, but you get something in return. For example, here, yes, I have given up the bishop pair, but what have I got in return? That is the question. Yeah, so the first imbalance as rightly pointed out by uh, Reshu Jain, Art Gadgets and Stuff, Haider, Yasmin, Setu Minocha is that 
white has bishop pair very good <clears throat> what next we know that white has the bishop pair and so what should black do here imbalance is bishop pair yeah position should remain close that's a very interesting point that was mentioned by chandresh sinha good job more space for white yes that's true somehow it seems white has more space right now he has more control of the center that also seems correct well d7 is weak says agastya day but not so easy to attack it yet so something is weak when your opponent can attack it or you can attack it for example you could say b3 is a small weakness because this guy is attacking it yeah <clears throat> so what else here black has the knight pair well knight pairs are not so important uh so what i did was i realized my opponent has the bishop pair and i immediately tried to do something about it by playing knight to e4 i think this is a nice move i want to take this bishop okay and uh if he plays something like bishop e1 then you know he breaks the coordination between his rooks it's a it's a victory for me in some way so he took here which is giving me a double pawn and you will see that these pawns look weak yeah uh, but tell me something what is the advantage that black gets because of the double pawns now this is something i want you to think about because everyone knows what is the benefit or what is the disadvantage of a double pawns they are doubled and uh, somehow they you know they look bad um, you can't control more squares with it but what is the advantage what is the one big advantage okay uh, I want to give a big thanks and a shout out to Jayant Rao Valuri for for sending 100 rupees. I think he has been struggling to send in his game since many days. Jayant, as I said on the mail, where there is a will, there is a way. If you want to send the game, find out, Google search it, how to send the game through PGN file and you will find it. Okay. Yes, very good. Everyone has rightly pointed out semi open B file with doubled pawns always give you an open file so more the doubled pawns more the open files it's very simple so one imbalance leads to some one disadvantage leads to some advantage and here the b file opening up gives me something to play for okay so rook f d1 was played by him and now I said I must play dynamically yeah, because if I play passively, it's not going to work. So I went d5. I think it was again a good move. He took and I took with the bishop because now my bishop stands strong on d5. Knight d2. And now I want you to think about the move here. What should black play? Okay. he White is playing very positionally. By the way, this is one of the strengths of uh, Raghunandan, he's a very good positional player. Mitesh Borkhetraya says double pawns can be used as suicide bombers. Yes, possible. So, what should black do? Shivam Shah says, when is double pawn not a weakness? Well, it, it is very dynamic. For instance, in this case, I don't see the double pawns as such a big weakness because it's not possible to attack them. At the same time, this pawn here is weak. Okay, Prakhar Bajaj says, F5 with 5 exclamation marks. Not such a great move, but okay. Pankaj Panchal said F5. 
uh, Vivek Mahale said F5, Sanchit said F5, very good, this is amazing, yeah, like you guys have begun to understand the dynamics of chess very well. By the way, all those who said Rook B8 or some move, good, your intentions are correct, but your piece is hanging here. And if you play a move like Knight D2, Rook D2, BG2, King G2, uh, then basically what you are doing here is landing up in quite a passive position. Um, or I would say even better could be that after Knight D2 to take on D5, ED5 and now Rook D2 uh, or Queen D2 and oops, sorry and queen d2 and you see that this pawn is attacked uh, these pawns are slightly weak and i when i have a disadvantage which is the doubled pawns what i should be aiming at is active play okay i should be aiming at something which is more dynamic in nature i shouldn't be playing positionally or i shouldn't be playing very slow so here, as you all rightly pointed out, and I'm very happy with this, the move is f5. Well done. And so when he took on e4, now what should I take back with? You know, it's uh, it's the topic of today. So uh, I don't have to really explain it to you in big depth, but what would you do here? Which pawn would you take it with? F5 opens the F file now, but won't it block the bishop? Uh, let's discuss. How many want to take with the bishop? How many want to take with the pawn? Everyone here says Fe4, Fe4, Fe4. Anyone who wants to take with the bishop? Yes, Poddar. Saurabh Poddar wants to take with the bishop. I would say that if I give up my bishop here, takes, takes, this is not as powerful as taking with the pawn. The reason being, yes, my bishop is blocked, but I don't really need this bishop on this diagonal right now. It is doing a great job attacking this pawn on b3. So actually my bishop is pretty good. And so after dc5, queen c5. Let's assess this position. Now it's time for uh, an imbalance check as, as I would like to put it. To check the imbalances in the position and there are several. Um, so let's see and then tell me who do you think is better. Is white better or is black? So who can write down imbalances precisely like minor pieces, pawn structure, space, material, open files, weak squares, uh, development, initiative, king safety. That would be nice. Let's, let's try to write everything properly instead of just telling me one one point. Like how one of the students always does. I am looking forward to his answer, Aditya Ramnathan. He, he always writes down perfectly in a paragraph. Come on, don't just say black is better because I was black. Yeah, like it's easy to say that. You have to be very objective when you are doing these imbalances and you are trying to assess the imbalances. You have to be objective. Black has the initiative, that's what everyone says. Rayoni also, same thing was said by Art and Gadget stuff. Um, Sachin Paul says, Mi minor pieces, black is better. Perhaps, this is a better bishop than this, maybe. I would say roughly around even, although yes, you are right that this attacks here, but it's not a big thing. Uh, but then space, black has more space, very good, because of these pawns here, they are, while all the white pawns are on the third rank, maximum or second rank, uh, pawn structure white, 
okay white has a pawn structure advantage because better pawns king safety black king is more safe although white king looks safer here but this this pawn is attacked okay sumed ram take says open c file b file strong bishop d5 okay right wiki m says black has the initiative open c file semi open b file f file black has two doubled pawns white bishop is bad white pawn structure is better king safety is similar would say king safety slightly white has to think about this f2 pawn for now because even if he does e3 i can jump in with queen c2 and still attack this pawn so a little bit of a weakness for the king karan parik says c open file f semi open file for black f and b uh, black has doubled pawns black has more space excellent i think all those who are writing this thing down please continue doing so you are bound to become better when you keep doing this okay <clears throat> lam i think few others who have written it very well are jaydeep chakrabarti anand sivaraman virinchi vadali mohini bhave pankaj panchal everyone is of you has given shanks as well has written it in great depth and also aditya ramanathan so all of you have basic idea i would say is that the position looks slightly better for black because first of all as you rightly pointed out the open file on c file semi open b file semi open f file by the way the file where there are no pawns is a complete open file where there are pawns is a semi open file maybe a slightly better bishop because it attacks here uh, the other thing is f2 is a slight weakness b3 is a slight weakness for white it's you can say e4 is slightly weak a5 could become weakness like to attack and so here my opponent actually went uh, queen d4 giving up a pawn but okay if he plays e3 i wanted to go queen c2 rook d2 take take and play rook c3 and i still feel that for the pawn uh, disadvantage uh, like for the bad pawn structure i have great activity for example b4 i can go a4 and somehow fix this weakness here and then get my other rook in and this is very good position so queen d4 was played i took a pawn he took took and played rook c1 because the rook on d1 is hanging yeah so he played rook c1 i took pawn takes and now again white to move what would you do here sorry black to move black to move what would you do here i'm very happy with the the response here people are really taking this imbalances seriously uh, and i hope it's helping you to understand positions better so black to move now black has a pawn up so you can say an imbalance in material he is a pawn up what would you do here a4 is suggested by raghavendra tomar sachin paul vaishali goel you are right a4 but then he will take bishop e4 i mean he will just win this pawn so i want to play a4 but i can do something in between virinchi vadali uday paideti hema log logu well done you guys are right mithesh borkhetar yeah is right you want to play a4 and fix this pawn weakness here but first why do give up this pawn just like that so i gave up a pawn as a sacrifice even pankaj panchal has given this right answer which is e3 very good you give up a pawn anyway it's going and then after he takes which he must because otherwise if he plays say f4 or something this pawn still alive and it can create a lot of problems like rook d8 
and the rook cannot move because a check may come in so that's why fe rook d8 and he played king f2 i went rook d2 attacking uh, bringing my rook to the seventh always a good thing to do check king here check king f6 takes and you will see that now i am actually from being a pawn up i am a pawn down but my pieces are so active here that i am threatening next move to take this pawn and he cannot defend it so he played bishop c6 i played rook a2 and if he takes here then i take on a2 a3 bishop b3 and rook a7 and i think i have very good winning chances here although it will not be very easy but still i will continue to press he went g4 which was an interesting move i took i played first h6 he went bishop e8 and i took on a3 check and yes i could play king uh, h7 king g6 here because there are no good discovered checks but i went king e5 i went for activity and he took on g7 rook a1 and now my plan was to play a3 a2 move the rook away somewhere and make a queen so he he had to be careful he played rook b7 first i played bd5 rook b5 good move uh, the point was uh, i played a3 he played bishop c6 again a nice move pinning uh, the the thing was if i tried to come out of this pin with say king d6 he would go rook b6 king c5 rook b5 and then here i i was not so sure whether i could make progress perhaps this was the right way i could have played uh, keeping the bishop but i i let him exchange the bishops here and then after rook a5 because if you play something like bd5 i already have check and make a queen so he had to play uh, rook a5 i played rook c1 he took on d5 queen and he got a drawn position here i think he should have just played bishop f3 and this is very difficult to win because i have just two pawns against his four pawns but he somehow after this very tough defense he played bishop c4 and now all of you can spot the winning move for, for black what should black play Jaydeep says do i need to play a4 because then i fix the pawn on a3 but it's in dark square and i have closed my light square well the po point is sometimes it's not about fixing the pawns on a colored square the main aim was to make that pawn into a queen so that's why i was pushing it you know here it was more important to push the pawn rather than so yes it was on a light square but i began pushing it towards making it a queen uh omkar chakradev says i'll come back to your question omkar uh yeah rook a4 well done guys all of you are very very alert rook a4 and i was able to win a pawn it was quite a surprise for him uh you know he he just lost his concentration for a bit and now this is winning uh i was able to because his first of all his king is cut off and now i just brought my king in shin this and won the game okay so omkar had a question i think who somewhere here where he said is this completely illogical that you take here i'm thinking what to take back with maybe with the rook and now rook g6 and well i may lose h6 for now but your g4 is hanging so you need to take care of that and secondly my e pawn is pretty solid here so i'm not going to lose that anytime soon i think this should be winning for white maybe something like how do i continue maybe bishop c2 attacking your rook and then you take and i take this and i think this will win slowly and steadily so like i'll put my bishop here i'll check you put push you back slowly improve my position 
it it should be winning okay so this was one game that was related to double pawns and this is double pawns are actually not always bad i'm going to show you one more example of this very quickly this is one of my favorite examples uh, comes from the opening which we discussed previously the accelerated dragon actually there are a lot of themes which are in accelerated dragon which are positionally very nice uh, knight b3 queen c7 f4 d6 bishop e2 b6 bishop f3 bishop b7 rook f2 this is a normal position and now i want you to think what should black play not an easy question not an easy question but tell me what should black play here <clears throat> sachin paul says why is queen's indian defense not as prevalent as super gvm level these days it solves black c8 problem and is very dynamic very underrated studied opening mm. well i feel that any opening which is hyper modern in its approach has some dangers for example i'll come to your question uh, after we look at this game please remind me because i don't want to shift the position but it's an interesting question okay rook d8 says shivam shah Akhil Sada Sivam says Rook D8. Uh, Chess 2700 says Knight A5. Interesting. Mayur Hede Hegde says Rook D8. Rohit Parekh Vishal Kumar E5. Akhil Sada Sivam Rook F Rook D8. Jaydeep Chakravarti says Thank you Sagar. Need to leave now, but we'll catch the recording later. Thanks Jaydeep as always he contributes rupees 400 to this stream thanks a lot for being there for for enjoying it and contributing every day uh, but don't leave the house yeah it's important to stay in okay all those who say e5 here interesting move not at all bad maybe f5 is what black could a uh, white could play i think e5 can be met with f5 so possible but i don't like e5 so much and this is first time that i don't have many people giving this the answer that i want that's interesting you see in such structures ansh bhargav says knight a5 very good ansh has got it right also one more person earlier had got it right and, and the yeah e5 knight b5 is also possible as sumed has rightly pointed out because then the d6 pawn falls correct a6 is a very normal move not at all a bad move but what usually does well in such positions is if you can get this knight to the c4 square if it gets to c4 it attacks this bishop and also attacks this pawn yeah so that is why knight a5 is a very interesting move and black say, white says well you are jumping to c4 i will anyway take it b a yeah many people got it now geeta ritesh preet matre probal gosh bhargav vemparla everyone gets it sumedra and take and there you have it the doubled pawns which look bad and gives white beautiful pawns to fight against but you will see the advantage bd4 and now this is a good move knight d7 because if you exchange the bishops somehow because of the f pawn moving these squares are slightly weak so it it is in black's favor to exchange those bishops yeah uh, i can give you an example where after e4 c5 knight f3 knight c6 take take g6 c4 bg7 bishop e3 knight f6 knight c3 castles uh, bishop e2 and here knight d4 queen d4 d6 
queen d2 knight d7 uh sorry it goes somehow bishop e2 knight d4 bd4 d6 castles a5 queen d2 and now uh, bishop e6 rook c1 and now knight d7 and what usually happens is that black is hoping for white to take on g7 the reason is that these dark squares here become slightly weak even after let's say f3 or f4 if you play even this pawn so white will usually preserve the bishop with bishop e3 and keep those dark squares in the position so in this case knight d7 i think white could have kept the piece here but then he was afraid that maybe take take he will lose a pawn well he has compensation so he played knight d5 and now uh, what should you do here we we are a little bit in a similar position like yesterday what should black play here Ishan Deshpande says in which structures the knight should come to c4 well in in many of the sicilian structures the knight coming to c4 attacks b2 pawn is usually usually a bishop on e3 so black white has to often give up a bishop because of that his e2 bishop neev patel rightly pointed out bd5 ed5 bd4 queen d4 queen c5 this is pointed out by ravi kumar very good uh, uday paideti also says take on d5 uh, dandapani says take on d4 but i think more accurate is to first take on d5 correct sai shrivardhan ram bd5 very good prathamesh divekar as well well done to all those who said bishop d5 ed5 bishop d4 queen d4 and queen c5 well done you are exchanging the queens and uh, here you will see the the beauty of this entire doubled pawns is that there is an open b file which would not have been if the pawn was here and this makes all the difference b3 rook b7 and now a4 bishop came back a5 you see there is another guy coming in and this dear friends is why doubled pawns are so so useful yeah so uh, don't think that doubled pawns are bad they are they can also be good and here if b4 is played then there is a3 by the way let's look at aditya ramanathan who has put uh, it in words i like that black has doubled pawns black has the initiative development is equal white has more space black has two semi open files black can attack c2 b2 so equal plus okay very interesting evaluation and as ravi kumar rightly points out suicide bombers can just come forward and here this is winning perfect advantage taken of the doubled pawns okay now if i have spoken so highly of the doubled pawn advantage i must also speak a bit about the disadvantage yes because i feel that in life nothing can be as pristine you know you can never say okay this is the best anything that is good comes with its own drawbacks anything that is bad also has its own good things in it yeah so here if you look at it this is a double pawn that is created here already and you gave up a bishop for that so you have a minor piece black has the bishop pair here but these slightly weak pawns and now you start with knight c6 bd3 castles knight e2 b6 and this is a very standard idea with bishop a6 knight a5 rook c8 trying to attack and gang up on the double pawns double pawns cannot protect each other and that's imagine there was a pawn on b3 white would have been very happy 
but now black has something to latch on to e4 and here uh, white black has a very nice move this was first played if i'm not mistaken by capablanca okay in this position black to move what should black do here if you play a move like bishop a6 knight a5 or something attacking this pawn then bishop g5 becomes a big nuisance in a way so how did black counter that move Well, I, I see that everyone is excited for their game to be seen here. We're going to do that. But first, this game has to be looked at with great attention so that you understand what are the disadvantages of double pawns. EC said very nice. The right move. He knew it. Capablanca's idea. Very good. EC is correct. Only person until now to have given the answer. What's your name, EC? Mayur Hegde is the other person. Golden Pawn puts it very well. It's static versus dynamic play. I think what black is trying to do is attack this static weakness. What white wants to do is put push his pawns forward, not so far. Push his pawns, pawns forward and try to attack the black king. So that's dynamic play. Well pointed out. E5 is possible as you guys have rightly mentioned. E5 closing the position but i think e5 maybe i will sacrifice a pawn and go bishop g5 still so that's the reason why i feel the right move is knight to e8 as was rightly played now someone said h6 here to stop bg5 but it would mean that after f4 it's white is getting time while what happens is that after knight e8 if you go f4, I can block it with the move f5. I can block the pawn and once this pawn is blocked, this bishop is blocked. And this is a big advantage that black gets. If you try to attack this, I can go always g6 and fortify this entire structure here. And bishops become passive yeah, because of this. Okay, bishop e3, d6, castles, knight a5 knight g3 bishop a6 and now you see the drawback of doubled pawns when you have doubled pawns here then it's very difficult to defend them with pawns and so it becomes weak black can get another attacker into the picture with rook c8 and that's what happened queen e2 rook c8 was possible but he played queen d7 another nice move the queen is coming to a4 very typical idea in the nimzo indian to attack c4 and then after f4 now is a moment of a little bit of thought should you go queen a4 here or first should you try to prevent white from doing something so black to move what would you do here what should black do here Pradyumna Kanukolo and also Aditya Ramnathan have given nice imbalances in this position. EC says his name is Ojas Kandhare. Okay, you see that's good to know. Um, very good to all the guys here. Ravi Kumar, Avyaya Bhatt, Pankaj Panchal, Mayur Hegde, Uday Paideti, Shanks, Sumed Ramteke. Well done. Excellent. Uh, you all have suggested the move f5 excellent the point is if you were to go queen a4 then after f5 yes you lose you're going to win this pawn but i'm already worrying a bit about the king side like for example take 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 this guy take bring the other rook in and suddenly the queen may come to f3 there could be a check here knight coming to h5 
too many things happening and so you you have kind of abandoned your king with the queen coming here don't do that first stop opponent's idea this weakness is not running away it's a static long term weakness first prevent opponent's plans and then go for it so rook e1 and now g6 again a nice move fortifying this structure and these pawns actually make this bishop passive this bishop passive this knight passive so it's very nice idea keep in mind this entire concept with putting your knight back and meeting f4 with f5 yeah this is a good concept to remember now in the game it so happened rook d1 queen f7 e5 well the point is white said black said i don't want to go queen a4 and go pawn hunting i'll stay calm i'll stay steady and i will play a static game after knight g7 the position has calmed down black king is safe the weakness still remains and i think black can just double on the d file and get a clear advantage uh, if i am not mistaken uh, i think if i just press enter and access the live database this was the game botwinik versus reshevsky okay so this was the famous game botwinik reshevsky where botwinik lost it's very uh, it was not a very usual thing for botwinik to be completely outplayed like this so you see after fortifying the king side he did come on the queen side like this but then he won the pawn in a much better situation uh, later I mean he didn't even win the pawn but it's completely passive position okay and and black went on to win so so this is all about doubled pawns okay uh, i can tell you guys a bit that doubled pawns have their own advantages it gives you a semi open file it controls some squares it let it brings weaknesses in the opponent's position uh in terms of disadvantage as you could see uh they become static weaknesses long term weaknesses and if you can't find active play for them then you are going to suffer in your games so that's how the double pawns are i hope everyone understood this concept if yes please let me know mukul raj says i want to ask which place and academy is better for chess player of 15 years want to pursue chess career where do you live mukul that's important okay now yes nischal i got your game one question which was asked by sachin paul let's answer that he says e6 knight f3 b6 this is the queen's indian and why is this not played at the highest level it seems like an underrated opening I think first of all it is played as you rightly pointed out Karyakin is one of the biggest experts here Sergey Tivyakov likes to play it also with black but always you know it's much safer always to take the center so when you take the center you may not even understand it now but your your moves are easier you play bishop e7 you castle you may play b6 bb7 if required you may play dc4 knight d7 c5 it's simpler but when you play a move like b6 g3 bb7 bishop g2 or bishop a6 you know there are several ways to play it's not so simple you can sometimes put your pawn d6 c5 you can sometimes play d5 c6 sometimes d5 c5 there are many different ways to play and always white has more space so it's like a counter punching opening and that's why queen's indian is played when you know black wants to win or playing in must win situations while um while more this openings like for example queen's gambit are more solid in nature okay so uh stehen says do you recommend chess combination encyclopedia by chess informant yes it's a good good book and there are a lot of nice positions okay let me go and see yesterday we did look at a few games and i should check out which games which was the last game that we looked at 
I think the last game we looked at was uh, Than Thanujana Sinali versus Koditwaku Lisara. Yeah, that was the last game, and I gave you homework, which was Fisher Feuerstein Geller Fisher Geller two games, and lot of people did the homework. Let me just uh, bring you here. So this was the homework: Fisher Feuerstein versus and also Fisher Geller, and I think. The homework was done by here. This was, if I am not wrong, uh, this was sent to me by Tiny B Boss who did this. Uh, also, it was done by Sumed Ramteke who did this homework very well uh, with all the analysis. Well done, Sumed. That was good job done by you. Uh, and did anyone else do it as well? Yeah, here is one more. I think Setu Minocha did it as well. So good guys, you you are taking this very seriously, and I hope that this will lead to improvement for you. That you will be you will become better players. Now let's look at the first game uh, for today, the the viewers games, and uh, I think the game which we should begin is Rick Gupta versus Amit Garg, uh, and I want to talk about. I, what I do is usually I take instructive moments from that from those games and I want to share them with you uh, because if I were to show you the entire games that would take too much time so my my instructive moment came somewhere here uh, this is Amit Garg is black he's 1300 Rick Gupta I think he's here he was white so it's black to move and black played the move here uh, which I don't like. So, black to move, what would you play here? Anand Sivraman said, I did it too, but didn't send it because he has it already. Okay, so, so uh, good that you did it. Pradeep says, how many GB is mega database? Well, it's somewhere around 1 GB, 1.5 GB. <clears throat> Knight D4 says Ayaya, but Prathamesh Divekar also says Knight D4. Uh, yes, Knight D4. Rahul Gupta says Rook D2, H2 winning. But hey Rahul, your knight is hanging there on C6. Everyone says Knight D4 and this is exactly what happened in the game. Uh, knight D4. But this is where things actually went in the favor of white because after Rook A D1. Now you can't take on F3 because if you do, I can take first here and you lose a piece. So Rook A D1, G6 was played. And then after rook d2, king c7, rook c1, you can see that after f4, white got a winning position. <coughs> this knight is hanging, cannot take on f4, so white won the game. But the point was that here you need accurate calculation when you realize that in terms of imbalances, white has a powerful bishop as compared to our minor piece. It's important to calculate accurately and this is where I think all of you have a lot of work to do that you need to you need to know when uh, you should look at the imbalances like all the people here who jot down the imbalances excellent but there should come a time when you stop it and just put your head down and start calculating so the right move is check King c3 and take on h2 if he gives a pawn take it the point being after bishop c6 you have to spot the move which actually saves the day what is the move that black plays here what is the move that black does here yeah there was also this interesting suggestion here by who is it ishir narayan i'll come back to it Yeah, rook c8, to all those who suggested rook c8, you win back the piece 
and it's equal so this was important when to actually calculate accurately someone said even rook d8 is possible because you can't take this it's a mate very good i think that's nice but to king c1 maybe rook d8 won't work now because you lose a piece so that's the reason why here you take and now if bishop c6 you can play rook c8 good job all those who said rook c8 here i've got many answers you are all right well done okay let's go to the next game this was by rahul yadav a very interesting game by rahul was played at a tournament i think it was delhi perhaps bhopal gm and he was playing white in this position against vaibhav kalpaka i think vaibhav is a good young player and here white to move first of all tell me the imbalances in this position and what should white do say to minocha says what if king b1 in that position well then i go knight d4 and my rook has already come in the position and my the white rooks are kind of disjoint so that gives me a very superior position to what i began with yeah tiny b boss you can you can wait yeah your game will come don't be so <clears throat> don't be so impatient so what are the imbalances here in this position and what should white do okay sumed not just a move you can't just say a move and just leave it you know think more uh in this position white has an open file white king is safe very good white has an open file here say this was said by ayaya but white has active bishops yeah that's good as rightly pointed out see the the thing is you all are romantics it seems you know you say bishop g6 honi arora but the point is yes if i take here take here is this a mate first question maybe it is the second question is what if i just castle then what is your bishop suddenly looking pretty silly on g6 so so don't just say the the move yeah so white first of all adish adiga says white has an open file white king is safer than black white has bishop pair white is better in development so everything going towards white it means if you have a bishop pair i think black also has it uh if you have better development this and the black king is in the center this already points out to something concrete you must do something to sort of do it now if black can castle black would be fine by the way if i am not be able to check all the answers please don't consider your your session to be unsuccessful or something like that more important is for you to learn and this is what counts yes not that you are able to tell me the answer i would definitely try but i don't do anything on purpose i miss some there are a lot of uh, pu things put up aditya ramnathan says white pieces are more active white has more space white has better king safety white has an open file white is more development developed pawn structure is equal white has ev initiative evaluation is equal well I, uh, sorry plus minus i think it's winning this position is winning and the right move here is knight e5 excellent strong move the point being that after uh, castles if you play castling here um, you you already lose material to knight d7 yeah and so you you take here but then after bishop b7 queen b7 and this is the move that rahul mix, missed in his game he took with the bishop but if he took with the queen he would have had a clearly winning position you see pieces got exchanged but black got in more trouble if he plays something like this you can just checkmate the king at leisure you know like you can go rook d4 you can play the other rook here and it's just completely winning 
so that's the reason why knight e5 was a very powerful move bd6 was played in the game but after takes takes and king e7 nice move uh, white still keeps an advantage but black has been able to at least coordinate himself okay so that's the reason why uh, bd6 was not good and there was one more very nice position in this game which came which came towards the end white won a piece but black played queen h7 here so if you were playing here with white what would you play here that's the question white to play and win probal ghost says white pieces are centralized white has an open d file white has a king safety black has a battery on a6 g1 diagonal uh white's lead in development plus minus yeah. pretty good but now this position what should white do It was a very nice move played by Rahul. Uh, by the way, if Rahul you are in the chat, then you can just uh, say hi because I think you played really well here. Yes, very good. Haider, Yasmin got the right idea. Well, knight d5, you can give up your knight for a pawn, but you have a good way to win the end game with either queen f2 threatening this pawn or queen e3 threatening this pawn queen d4 is possible but you maybe it's also okay uh, to play that but yeah queen f2 was played in the game uh, and after takes check take the queen this is the reason uh, that white is winning is not because he has an extra pawn or something but he can play the move b3 here nice move the point is to create a passed pawn here and a passed pawn here and white gets a winning position you can see it seems like black pawns are really good but after h4 black king has to first go here when this pawn starts to run while these two pawns can be easily managed by the white king so e5 c4 uh, take take e4 h5 h6 and uh, stopping those pawns and queening your own pawn good job rahul i think you played an excellent game uh, i am very happy with this quality of your game okay who's next we have uh, yeah this is confused photon who played here and confused photon is playing with the white pieces in this game i don't know who he is but i would re request all of you to actually send material with your name rather than confused photon i mean i'm confused as to who confused photon is so we come to this position where you need to understand the imbalances and you need to tell me what should white play white to move n swaminathan says hello sagar hi do i have i met you before n swaminathan uh, the name is does does uh, sound well known uh, any 4 was played in the game yes any 4 was played in the game but try to understand the imbalances first of all go study uh, and if yes white has better development says rogue and haider yasmin good job you pinpointed the most important imbalance white has the better development black's development is pretty poor yeah so in that sense it has to be that white must open the position very good so all of you who said the move c4 here 
good job or if you said the move a4 good job these two are i think a very powerful moves trying to open up the position for your pieces but if you play knight e4 as was played in the game then after queen e6 i don't see how you are actually going to make use of your knight being here and black is actually threatening f5 and e4 so that's the reason why sometimes you just jump in to do something and then later on you realize oh my god i can't do anything so don't do that look one move ahead what if my opponent plays queen e6 what will i do it's not so simple yes you can play castling here also pretty fine or you can even castle here but a4 or c4 is making the best use of the imbalance which is the lead in development and opening up the position okay now let's go to the next position this was one by confused photon this one is by siken i don't know who is what's his name uh, actually maybe warrior 007 if i'm not wrong uh, it was this position that he wanted to show and he told me that you know in the class you showed us something very similar with a pawn here and he managed to actually reach a very similar position on the same day playing with the black pieces uh, in this opening and this is very interesting and he managed to win with a superior knight as compared to the bishop so just to show you how that position was reached uh, black is a pawn up now two pawns up he gave up one and got his knight nicely there and won the game very nice thanks for sharing this game it shows that what we are learning is not something that is not going to happen in your games it happens all the time now abdul kalam sent in a very nice game of his i'm going to just show through this i think the entire game is uh is instructive by the way saurabh poddar uh said something interesting here which is it's sometimes very confusing for me where to do concrete calculation and where to use imbalances can you elaborate i think it has to do more with a feeling uh, it's a very nice question that you have asked uh, sometimes you have to do this imbalance technique and you know what happened to me was after reading this book i used to do it a lot and i became more like uh, a positional player i started thinking a lot on these lines at the right moment i must switch to calculation mode which happened much later so i in this entire 21 day camp i'm going to dedicate some time to improving calculation as well it's a very subtle thing when to stop being just uh, sort of general in your thought and being very very concrete it's uh, it's an important balance to keep by the way let's just quickly run through this game and uh, try to figure out uh, what happened so it was a queen's gambit bc and you will see that white has a nice pawn structure and abdul kalam played castles next he played c4 good move he then gave his opponent an isolated and sort of weak pawns there is an outpost here he got his queen on the open file brought his knight in rook c1 queen b3 and here i i like this next move that he played a4 pushing the knight away a5 and then uh, just making a hole maybe this is a small loft here not required but perhaps not bad a6 and now queen c3 trying to come in uh, inside the position knight e4 he exchanged and here you have a good knight versus bad bishop scenario and he won the game beautifully this was again a nice tactical end i know i showed it a little bit too quick but good game by abdul kalam well done maybe next class we we spend some time looking at some games and we also learn we keep a balance it's already 10:30 we've been on air for one and half hours so i won't uh, be taking up more time now uh, 
one thing which by the way just to tell you whose games I have already so that you don't resend them again to me uh, are Santanu Bohra, Jayavira, Anand Sivaraman, Sai Shri Vardhan, Prathamesh Divekar, Gangesh Borse, Suman Chakrabarti, Itohan, Sumed Ramteke, Kushbu, or sorry, Harsh, Harsh Surya Vanshi, Confused Photon, Sasha 7.1 and Lightning McQueen, I think, Shanks, New Patel, Tiny B Boss, Fisher, no, Fisher is not sending me games. Arav Patel, um, what else do I have? Uh, Bhargav, some genius 1998, Bhargav and Virinchi, Virinchi over here. Harsh Raghuvanshi, Saurish 47, Borkhetarya, uh, yes, I have, I think, Mitesh, uh, Sarthak Chess, Abhishek Chawan, Nishchal Chess. By the way, Nishchal, good job. Yesterday he sent me an entire word pad with all his analysis. I think he's art gadgets over here. He sent me this entire thing and uh, I was like, wow, who can do this? For every move, there was an explanation written. And today he found a way to send a PGN. Good job. Uh, Nathyat Prathamesh Divekar, Karan 2150. Bhola Nath Das, I think, and Vipin. I have all these games where, which I have analyzed and found out some interesting moments for you to learn and improve your understanding of imbalances. Uh, so if anyone else wants to keep sending, do send it on chessbaseindia at gmail. We are slowly and steadily going through all the games. Maybe we won't finish it in one day, but we will do it. So I hope you enjoyed the class. And uh, now for the homework, and you know your homework is to find a, an interesting game with doubled pawns okay it could be a good uh, use of double pawns it could be a bad position where double pawns are poorly used and the way i would suggest you to do it if you have chess base and mega database already is to go here open mega database okay this is here uh, go to games load a filter like this one filter list go into advanced and uh, what i would do is i would go to position no not position material yeah material and here i have doubled pawns okay so i can do this doubled and it should give me all games with doubled pawns and i do okay uh, maybe I don't I should create search booster but it will take a lot of time so you can see it comes up with many many thousand games because there will be so many with doubled pawns like here you see there are doubled pawns uh, in this game as well there are doubled pawns so so that the important thing could be to search here you can always reduce your search size by going in game data and saying I don't want games I want only games of both players being about 2750 and then you go to position uh, sorry into material and say doubled and then you do okay and then the number of games that you get would be maybe around 100 and you can find some interesting games where there were doubled pawns like this one and the most common opening of course is the Berlin or exchange Rai Lopez and all of this where there are double C pawns. So guys, thank you everyone for the class today and for all those who contributed. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, tom tomorrow, we will be learning more about pawn structures, isolated pawns or backward pawns. And uh, Yes, if it's your game, it's also fine. If you have any game of double pawns and if you can analyze that better, but if you uh, want to look at some other game, that's also fine. Uh, and um, yeah, please subscribe to the channel and we will see you. I'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Mukul Raj, you live in Bihar uh, and you want a chess academy. Maybe if you write to chessbase India at Gmail, 
we can share with you some numbers where you can contact uh, people. Saurabh Poddar says, can I get chess base 15 on EMI basis? Well, maybe, but if you can't afford it, then maybe you can write to us at chess base India and we'll see if we can do it on EMI basis. But for now, all of you, thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed today's session and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.